Right, hey guys, let's continue setting up our turn in place functionality. So, in the atom graph in our locomotion state machine, let's open up the idle state, highlight the output here, and we are going to uh, update or override this function here on update. I want to create a new binding, I want to call this update idle state. nice now we are going to set the root your mode to accumulate then we're going to call our function process turn curve and that is all for this function hit compile and save if you ever get an error here just highlight your function and ensure it is set to thread safe now back to our idle states we're going to create a new uh, state machine here. Right. Uh, state machine. I'm going to call this idle turn state. And plug it up. Open this up. And we're going to create another state called idle as well. Now, I already added my animations, but you can download the animations in the resource section of this course. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to use the idle rel ready animations for now until we create a binding function for this as well. So we can switch between the standing idle and the crouching idle. Now, if I hit compile, the character will now be in the idle state. So, from here, we will need to create a few transitions. The first one will be a new state. We'll call this enter turn. And we will need a transition. The transition is going to be our root your offset. So let's find our, your offset variable here, wherever it might be, yeah, and we're going to get the absolute value and check if it's greater than 50 and if it is, we return true. If it is, we can switch from the idle state to the turn in place entry state now from here oh let's promote this transition to a shared and we're going to call this attempt turn nice so we're going to create another state from the enter turn and we're going to call this state turn recovery And we're also going to create a transition back to enter turn and this transition back from turn recovery to enter turn is going to be our shared uh, transition attempt turn so that is already set from turn recovery to idle is going to be our automatic rule based on sequence player in state that is all uh, this transition it's going to be really short as well. Uh, we're going to say get curve value, and we're going to use our turn your name name variable here as the curve name, and we're going to check if it's nearly equal. So let's check if it's nearly equal and return now compile you shouldn't have any errors 
Now we need to set things up further. We're going to open up the enter turn state and we're going to add a new sequence evaluator. Right. We are going to mm -mm -mm -mm. set the sequence to a dynamic value. We need to set the explicit time as well to a dynamic value. And we should uncheck should loop. We can just plug this in. Now on the output, we need to create a new function and we're going to call this set up turn in place entry. Or set up turn entry. Yeah, that's short, short and sweet. Right. So from here, it's really simple. We're simply going to get the your offset again, and we're going to get the sign float. Then we're going to check if it's greater than zero, and if it is, we need to promote this to a variable, and we should say attempt turn counter. CW for clockwise. So should attempt turn counterclockwise. Connect this up. And that is all for this transition here. Uh, yeah. So I was here, I was here, and I was here. Now Compile save and I'm going to hit play. And as you can see, when I tried, well, when I turned to face a certain direction, instead of him sliding, he went into the T pose. This is because he's trying to read the states that we just created for the turn in place. So when you look to your right, he should have played the turn in place animations, but since we don't have any animations slotted yet, he will simply go into the T pose or better yet, the A pose. Now, we are going to move forward and create a few uh, little functions for the sequence evaluator. Uh, we're going to create one for on become relevant. Give me a sec. Right. And we're going to call this function setup turn anims. So from here, we're going to get from the node, we're going to convert this to a sequence evaluator pure function and we will also need a new variable and we're going to call this final turn anim this is going to be of type se uh, anim sequence nice and we're going to set this variable we will uh, we will set the value here soon. For now, let's just move forward. So from the sequence evaluator pure function, we are going to say set sequence with initial blending. And we're going to plug this up right here. I'm just going to add a reroute now to keep things clean. We will need a context. So let's right click, search get context and plug this up here. The return value from the final animation will be the input sequence for this function. And we can leave the blend time to 0.2. From here, we can say 
well from the node actually so from the sequence evaluator pin here we're gonna say set explicit time leave that as zero and return now compile and save back into your enter turn state we're going to create another function called on update and um, this function is going to be really short and we can end this video right here so we're going to call this update turn anims And from the context, we want to say get delta time. And we will need, I wonder if we created it. We did not. So let's create a new variable. Call this turn anim duration. It's going to be a float. And we're going to set this variable now we're going to add the delta time to our turn and duration and that will be our new value from here let's get the node input of the function and we're going to say convert to sequence evaluator again. And then we will set the explicit time. And return. The time for the explicit time node will be our tie our turn atom duration hit compile and save in the next video we're going to create a function uh, actually let's just add it right now and we can set it up in the next video so i'm going to select a new add a new function here and say i'm going to name this select turn atoms it's going to have an output of type Anim sequence and we're going to name this return value we're going to make this function a pure function and it's also going to be thread safe compile save head back to our setup turn atoms function and we're going to get our select turn atoms function and plug it up like so all right so in our next video we will set up the select turn atoms function as well as the turn recovery state so yeah see ya